My name is Dana Abrams, and I'm the district ombudsperson for St. Paul Schools. And I'd like to introduce Heather Kilgore, who is the director of family engagement and community partnerships. Now, Miss Dana, she's, uh, she's being a little bit humble because Miss Dana is who put this event together for us this year. So will you join me in giving her a round of applause? <laughs> Uh-huh. Well, welcome. We're so happy you're here coming through tornadoes and whatever it is that's going on out there on a Sunday afternoon. We're grateful you're here uh, to help us celebrate with you our African-American graduates from St. Paul Public Schools this year. We're so proud of you. We're so uh, excited for all you're going to do, and we're so excited that you're going to be representing St. Paul Public Schools as you go out into the world and change it and make it a better place for all of us. Uh, I'm, I'm joined here representing uh, district administration by our chief of staff, Cedric Baker. And our chief of schools, Dave Watkins. And I'm sure they join me in inviting everybody for, to give us a big round of applause for the class of 2019 in SPPS. And it's my uh, great honor and, and pleasure to turn it over to the chair of our St. Paul Public School Board, uh, Zuki Ellis, to bring some greetings on behalf of the board. Okay, so I always love these events because I graduated from St. Paul Public Schools. I went to Highland, class of 92. I totally aged myself. <laughs> um, I would like to acknowledge board members that are here. Uh, Treasurer, Marnie Zhang, also a graduate of St. Paul Public Schools. <laughs> Our clerk, Jeanelle Foster, graduate of St. Paul Public Schools. Um, who is not here with us from the Board of Education is our Vice Chair, Steve Marchese, um, John Schumacher, Mary Vandewert, and John Broderick. Um, I do not want to be up here talking and talking and talking at you. I am just really excited to see all of our seniors get recognized for the hard work they've done in not just four years, but their entire journey. Um, this is a big deal, and it's an especially big deal for our kids sitting in this room. Let's just, let's just put that in the space, because this isn't supposed to happen, and it's happened, and we should recognize and be proud of that, and I am. So without further ado. Thank you, Chair Ellis. Now, for those of you who have a program, everybody got a program? So the next piece in here, which I thought would be appropriate, is for us to sing the Black National Anthem. But before we do that, I need to let you know that I cannot sing. <laughs> so I am going to need all your help as I turn this microphone away from my mouth. And if we could just sing just the first verse and chorus, that would be great. So is there, and do we have any singers in here that want to come to the mic? Y'all acting scary. OK, so if we could all just join in and start singing. Oh, I'm sorry, please stand. If you're able, please stand. All right, here we go. Lift every voice and sing Um, but as we move on, I'd just like to introduce our speaker for the occasion, Dr. Teresa Battle, who is the Assistant Superintendent of High Schools for St. Paul Schools. Um, Dr. Battles is a 36-year educator. I think that in itself needs a round of applause. Dr. Battle received her BS in special education from Hampton University, her Master's of Arts from the University of Minnesota, and her doctorate in educational leadership from the University of Minnesota. 
I remember interviewing her for a project that I had, and she shared with me that this age group is her age group that she loves to help empower and to help our students become prepared to go on to the next step in their journey. So without further ado, Dr. Battle. Thank you so much, Dana. So we just sang Lift Every Voice and Sing. And the reason I know the words from that song is because I'm a proud graduate of one of the HBCUs, Historically Black Colleges and Universities, Hampton University. And as a freshman, you are required to learn that song and many others. And yes, Hampton has a curfew for freshmen. You have to be in by midnight. Make sure you get those grades. So those of you moving on to college, I wish you, wish you much success. Those of you moving straight into a career, also wish you much success. And some of you are going to find your way. I had a Harding senior tell me he's taking off a year just to travel. And then I have other graduates who are joining the military. And so I wish you all well before I bring you greetings. So greetings and welcome to all of the seniors, staff, and families with us today. It is my pleasure to be with you this afternoon. Class of 2019, I am delighted to be here and to offer my congratulations. Whether you are going on to higher education, internships, jobs, travels, or adventures yet to be determined, you are on the cusp, the brink, the verge, the next phase of your life. Before you launch into those steps, I advise you to take some time to reflect. We don't take enough time as adults just to listen to the silence, pause, and reflect. So young people, take time to reflect on your high school journey. All the joys, the disappointments, the fun times, the sometimes okay times, the times when you doubted yourself, the time when you started off with friends, but they're not your friends today because you have evolved and grown, and so have they. So reflect on the lessons learned and then establish what you want out of the next phase of your life. Take time to set new goals. It is so important for you to have a downtime. You have worked tremendously hard. I want you to embrace the concept of dulce far niente. Now I just learned about this phrase from my respected mentor who's retiring after 52 years, Mary McBee, principal of Central High School. So this phrase was aptly captured in the film Eat, Pray, Love, and it means to enjoy the sweetness of doing nothing. And that's exactly what Mary McBee is going to do for a little <laughs> while. But just for a little while, young people, take time and reflect. I feel it's a privilege to be here and that I represent all of my ancestors. So Dana told you about my educational accomplishments, and I always want to make sure people know those accomplishments. My father only finished a fourth grade education. He and his family were sharecroppers. So my grandmother had him on her hip as she picked those crops. My mother only graduated from high school. So I stand on the shoulders of those great ancestors that I stand before you with a doctorate from the University of Minnesota. I'm also my family's historian. I'm back nine generations. I was privileged to know my great-grandmother, Lily White, who lived to be 102 years old. Her grandparents were enslaved, so I actually knew somebody who knew slaves. Her father bought his first piece of land and signed it with an X because he didn't know how to read and write. 
and I stand before you with a doctorate in education. So you don't let racism, sexism, all the isms, any other isms keep you from persisting in your dreams. So I encourage you also, know your story. Ask your elders, who am I? Who are the people I come from? So I had great help from uh, researching my family tree through the St. Paul Library, census records. And then I was, I was stuck. And so I went to the Mormons, the Church of Latter-day Saints, because that's part of their uh, faith. You have to know your family history. How many of you know the company that the Mormons now own? Anybody research their history ever? What's one of the largest uh, genealogical search firms out there now? Was it? That's the Mormons. They made it into a business. So I encourage you, take time to reflect, but know who you are and from whence you came. So there have been times in American history when it was illegal for blacks to learn to read and write. When I was born in the 1960s, many black children were not allowed to attend school with white children. Schooling in America was not built for women, poor people, blacks, American Indians, and other people of color. So your own graduation is a form of resistance. So young people will ask me, Dr. Battle, are you woke? I'm so woke, I need a nap. <laughs> and so the way I deal with oppression and I protest is to make sure you know how to re read and think critically. So reading is just a form of protest. So yes, you can march. Yes, you can write letters, sign petitions but just your very act of graduating is an act of protest. It's a form of resistance and a testament to your perseverance to achieve in a system that is still not ideal for all black students. Even here in St. Paul Public Schools, we have a long way to go. I hear you. St. Paul Public Schools wants all of our students to thrive academically, socially, and emotionally. We want you to be readers, writers, mathematicians, thinkers, problem solvers, good citizens, and appreciators of the art and the world. Most importantly, we want to help you make your dreams and reality. Because you are achieving your dream to graduate, there's a lot of love, happiness, and joy here this afternoon. I want to thank you again for the opportunity to be with you to celebrate everything you have accomplished so far and everything you have to look forward to. It is through your hard work and dedication and with the help of your teachers, other school staff, community mentors, and supportive adults and your families, you are finishing high school having cultivated your skills and talents to become remarkable individuals. Before I end, families, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to you for trusting St. Paul Public Schools to educate your children or your babies, even though we know they think they grown. <laughs> it has been both an honor and a privilege. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to help your children grow into successful young people. So seniors, once again, I offer you congratulations. Take time to reflect on all you've accomplished. Set those new goals. Find out from who you come from and who you are. And once again, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Battle. She gave us a lot of information. Um, so next we're going to start with the presentation of our graduates and we also have a gift and a certificate for each graduate. 
Um, and we're going to go in alphabetical order, so no favoritism here by anybody. Um, I'd like to welcome up here Ms. Gillespie from Agape High School. Can I, can I read a poem I wrote for my students? Okay. I'm not trying to show favoritism, but <laughs> um, I'm the social studies department at Agape High School. I've been there 22 years. I'm going to miss Mrs. Battles. Yeah. So this poem is called The Black Girl in My Class. When she first walked into my class, I knew she was the one. She had that shy look in her eyes that made me want to come closer closer. I stood next to her shyness. Some sh sometimes she was loud as hell, screaming her joy out to the world, laughing that sounded like a sweet song to my eyes and my ears. She spoke my language. She had that black tongue, the one that had to twist and turn to be heard properly. But I always knew what she was saying. Her eyes told me everything I needed to know. Our miles were never, ever needed. So some school days we learned in silence, but most school days we were just happy to be around each other. Even when she had just gotten in trouble, I still loved her. When she slammed my door, she was mad at me. I loved her still. When she texted her way through my lesson, I loved her still. When she turned her assignments in late, I loved her still because she has learned to survive, to survive in a space that doesn't see her beauty or promote her growth. But she's a survival survivor, and I absolutely love her. She is the black girl in me, I am the black girl in she, and unapologetically, I see and love you dearly, black girls. My students are Ariana Land, <laughs> Melanie Booker and Nisha Henderson. They come up now? Okay. <laughs> and I'm here today with my best friend at work, too, Miss Christy McCoy. She also supports our black girls. It's an honor and pleasure to be up here to um, support these young women. They are incredible. So we are just very proud of each and every one of them. Thank you, Agape. Now to the next person who needs no introduction, Ms. Mary McBee, recognizing the Central High School graduates. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. I'm also happy and proud to present the um, 2019 African American Scholars from St. Paul Central. And I hope there are at least some of them in the audience. Would they please come forward if they're here? I didn't happen to see, oh, okay, here, here comes one. <laughs> Uh, this is Brooklyn Jarrett. Please uh, recognize her. And I will call out the names of those who are not here. Uh, Samaje Bowers, Eva Langenbrenner, Adam Pickell, Neela, Nelia young Aircon. I'm sorry, we got the wrong person. Alasia Duncan, uh, Celine Miller. Uh, Brooklyn Jarrett is here. I'm happy to see her. And Winfrey Onega. Congratulations to the Central High School students. we have in the program it says assistant principal Ulya Yang but we're fortunate to have the principal of Como Park, Heart, Como Park High School Ms. Stacy Collins. Good afternoon everybody. If we could have the Como Park uh, honor grads come on up. I am happy 
and proud to announce our Como Park graduates. I'm going to say everybody's name so it's in the space. Um, they, we, I am honored um, and privileged to work with them every single day. We have two of our graduates here. I'm going to read the names in order. Kalia Hughes-Bester, Cree Lubin, Charvay Williams, Charvay's here. Um, Naila Young Akon, Caleb Jackson St Stitch, Asia Falk, and Don Ward, better known as Josh Ward. Congratulations to our Como Park grads. Thank you, Como Park. Do we have students here from Creative Arts Secondary School? And is there anyone from administration from Creative Arts? Okay, come on up. So the Creative Arts School um, graduates are Marquise Bell, Alyssa Turner, Michaela Kamara, Najee Wilson, and Trey Taylor. Congratulations, Creative Arts. Do we have any focus beyond students here? Yes. Okay, great. Come on. Um, I'm going to read, thank you to the two students who are here, but I'm going to read everyone's name. Nakia Atkins, Dominique McGowan, Ariane Gordon, Keith Travis, and Rezaya Henry. Congratulations, Focus Beyond. As they're finishing up, if Ms. Eleanor Clemens, um, the assistant principal of Gordon Parks High School, could come and introduce her students. And if there are any Gordon Parks students, if you could come forward. Good afternoon. It is my honor and pleasure to recognize these outstanding graduates. We have two that are present today. However, I will name each student. Um, Ramel Adams, Mariah Mason, who's present, um, Anastasia Jefferson, Lanasia McEwen, who is also present, and Kanyelle Gray. Congratulations. Mr. Bush. Next, we'll have Harding High School. And Mr. James Bush will present the students from Johnson High School. I mean, excuse me, Harding High School. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Thank you, Ms. Abrams. Hello, my name is Mr. James Bush. I'm the African American Cultural Specialist of Harding High School. Uh, our principal, Mr. Doug Resbeck, is in route, but he may come here at any moment. But I will do the uh, introduction, but I would like to uh, honor our students for the 2019 graduates of Harding High School. I will say the names that the ones are not here as well. Kayla Ellis, Amia Mile, Ayana Rogers Neely, Ayanna King, we have Catherine Grimm, congratulations. Jeremy McDowell, congratulations. And Yashina Morris of Harding High School, we congratulate you. Congratulations, Harding students. <laughs> Next we'll have Recognition of students from Highland Park Senior High School. And Brother Abi Salam Adam, who is the assistant principal, will present his students. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it seems there are no Highland Park students, but I will share their names with you. But I'm going to sing a little a Somali song that's for students in schools. So we can hear also another language as we gather in this beautiful gathering. 
it goes like this. Ardaiban ahayo, ardaiban ahayo, ubihi wadankan ahayo. Wahanu ordaya, ordaya, in andalkega amfuro, abio hoyo, abalko di gude, dadalki la imide, alahayo, eager gar, eager gar, amin. And in English, <laughs> I don't think I have talent in singing, but I think this is the first time I've sang publicly. So, <laughs> so in English it goes like this. I am a student, I am a student. I'm the flower of the nation. The reason why I'm hastening and rushing and running is to serve my country and to reward my parents for all the efforts that they have exerted for me. Therefore, I have exerted all the efforts so God help me, so God help me. That's what the song says. So. And the students from Highland Park Senior High School are Alandra Hickman, Jada Martin, Seth Zaitchik, Taylor Love, Kalia Phelps, Sidra Michael, and God's favor, Simon. Congratulations to all of them. Now see, when I was asking for singers to come up here, he didn't come up here. <laughs> Next, we, we have Humboldt High School, so if Humboldt students would come up. Is there anybody from Humboldt administration here? Okay. All right. So I'm gonna also say the names of the students. Um, Darnell King, Ayana Smith, Miracle McDowell, Joquan Williams, and Malaysia Rowe, Humboldt Secondary School. <laughs> Next we have Johnson High School, and Ms. Mrs. Doreen Brookins will introduce the Johnson students. Johnson, the, the pride of the East Side. <laughs> Not Harding. <laughs> On behalf of Principal Michael Thompson and the staff um, and administration of Johnson High School, we say congratulations to all of the graduates. And from Johnson today, we have Jarrell Adams, <laughs> Keon Miller, <laughs> Chanel Denea Carter. Heavenly Whitaker, Daniel Ajayi, Damarion Nelson, Kaditra Smith, Asia Craig, Tasha Ross, and Terrell Turner. the graduates from Open World Learning Community School. Any students from Open World, if you would come forward. I know we have an Open World student. We were talking earlier. Okay. We're gonna recognize from Open World, Dejanea Mitchell-Taylor. Last but certainly not least, we have the students from Washington, D. 
Technology School, and we have assistant principal, Ms. Lydia Kabaka, who will introduce those students. Do we have any students here from Washington? If you could come forward, please. So congratulations, class of 2019. On behalf of, on behalf of Washington, I'm just going to read all the names of those students. Aaliyah Chess, Emmanuel Latimer, Janice Cole, Ronald Jandro, and Isaiah Evans. Congratulations. So can we just give a last round of applause for all of the graduates? We want to stand up and give them a hand. Thank you. Yep, and actually if um, administration from schools could come and get the gifts and certificates for the students that weren't able to make it today so that you can give them to them, that would be great. Um, we're almost to the end and I just wanted to make sure that we recognize we have folks who are going to be retiring. We have people going on to their next journey. And so if we could just have Mary McBee just stand up front. Um, Dr. Mike McCullough from Washington is not here. But how about Principal Doug Revsbeck? So with Ms. McBee, Dr. McCullough, and Doug Resbeck, who are all retiring at the end of this school year, we just wanted to take an opportunity to thank you for all that you have done for African-American students, but for all students in St. Paul Public Schools. Lastly, um, I think she sat down. Our speaker, Dr. Teresa Battle, if you could come <laughs> forward. As Dr. Battle has assumed a new position, she will be, she is the new superintendent of Burnsville Savage. Burnsville Egan Savage. Well, thank you. So, just in closing, again, I just want to say thank you for all of you all who came out, who have supported your students throughout this entire journey. I know as a parent myself, the challenges that you face with folks are grown and want to be grown, and you're still parenting. But it's a pleasure. This is between graduation time and the first day of school. Those are my favorite times of year. Because on the first day of school, everybody is so excited about learning. And that does something for me when you can see that, that excitement in their eyes. And it's because of educators like Dr. Battle, um, Doug Resbeck, and Mary McBee, who keep that light going so that when we do get to the end of our high school journey, we are able to celebrate. So with that, I want to say thank you. I want to invite you over down the hall. We have some refreshments. And again, congratulations to the families and the students in the class of 2019. Thank you.